In today's Saturday Extra, we'll be looking at USS Selfridge, a Porter-class destroyer that, much like her sister ships, tends to pass under the radar. If this ship is known for anything, it's for losing her bow in 1943, severe damage that took her out of the war until mid-1944. We'll look at that, of course, along with the rest of her story that began on December 18th, 1933. That was when Selfridge was laid down by New York shipbuilding. Her construction after that was fairly average. The ship was launched on April 18th, 1936, a bit over two years from her keel laying. The fitting out for its part went much faster. USS Selfridge was commissioned on November 25th, 1936, less than a year after her launching. Now, before we talk service, let's look at the ship's design. If you are interested in the design process, I have a video on Porter that I'll link in the description. For now, we'll focus on the details, starting with the displacement. That came out to 1,850 tons at the standard loading with this going up to around 2,600 when fully loaded. These were not small ships, but fitting the destroyer leader role, they're often assigned. That displacement mostly went towards a heavy weapon load. Most American destroyers of the 1930s were equipped with five 5-inch five guns, this often dropping down to four barrels due to stability concerns. Selfridge and the other porters would buck that trend. These ships carried eight 5-inch 38 caliber guns and four twin mounts, a super-firing pair on the bow and a super-firing pair on the stern, quite different from the usual American destroyer of the day. In fact, they kind of look more like small cruisers, something that continues with their usage. The gun mounts on Porter-class ships were single purpose. They were not intended to engage aircraft. That would be handled by two quad 1.1 inch cannon mounts, the infamous Chicago piano, a further eight barrels between the two mounts. And to continue this trend, the ships also carried eight torpedo tubes. Two quad mountings both carried amidships, one on either side of the second funnel. Those, along with depth charge racks on the stern, rounded off the weaponry. Now, as this is a destroyer, we can round off the design itself with the ship's speed. That came out to a speedy 35 knots on 50,000 shaft horsepower, through two shafts. With the design done, let's look at Selfridge's service life now. This began in interesting fashion, at least as far as sea trials are concerned. While the ship commissioned on November 25th, 1936, she wouldn't do her shakedown cruise until January of 1937. And this took Selfridge to the Mediterranean instead of the usual Caribbean or East Coast. Admittedly, not very much happened during the cruise, but it was a change of pace. Either way, that cruise came to an end by March of 1937. At that point, Selfridge was back on the East Coast, where she would go into a short overhaul before taking up the typical training duty, although the ship broke those up on presidential escort runs. That took place in September, before Selfridge was routed to the Pacific in October. Or so the plan went. She was actually diverted in November for another presidential escort mission. When that was done, Selfridge moved to the Pacific. She arrived in San Diego on December 22nd and would remain in California for the next two years. Selfridge spent the remainder of the 1930s training in Californian waters, with the exception of the annual fleet problems. Things only really changed in 1940 when the destroyer was assigned to Pearl Harbor, and even then it was mostly a change of locale. The actual duties remain the same, just out of Hawaii instead of California. Selfridge would remain based out of Pearl Harbor for 1940 and 1941, training and participating in fleet exercises 
to keep the crew sharp. This pattern only really came to an end on December 7th, 1941. Selfridge was moored in the harbor when the Japanese attack descended on the Pacific Fleet. Being a destroyer not named Shaw, Kassin, or Downs, there wasn't much directed her way. As a result, Selfridge escaped damage. And to her crew's credit, they were firing on the Japanese within five minutes of the attack beginning. One of the fastest response times that day. Not only was the crew fast, they were also quite good at their job. According to the action report, they shot down two aircraft, while a third vanished after being fired on, and a fourth, hidden smoking, would crash out of sight. In the chaos of the attack, those aircraft were likely fired on by multiple ships. Nonetheless, it does show how prompt Selfridge was. I'll link that report for those interested. After the attack concluded, Selfridge took up patrol duties off Hawaii, in addition to screening USS Saratoga on the abortive Wake Island relief operation. When that was called off and Wake Island fell, Selfridge remained with Saratoga. This lasted into January 1942. Until, that is, Saratoga was torpedoed on January 11th. Selfridge escorted the carrier to Pearl Harbor for emergency repair. With Saratoga in for repair, Selfridge shifted to other duties, mostly patrolling Hawaii, aside from a break on January 20th, to escort a merchant ship to Canton Island, and then back to Hawaii when that transport run was done on January 27th, during which Selfridge depth charged a suspected submarine on January 30th. If she caused any damage isn't clear, although there are no reported sinkings at this time or area. In any event, Selfridge was back in Pearl Harbor on February 6, 1942, only for a couple days. On the 9th, she left once more to escort Saratoga to Bremerton for proper repair work. This proved uneventful, with the carrier safely arriving on the west coast. As for Selfridge, she would return to Hawaii by the middle of March 1942, where the ship took up convoy escort duty through May. Nothing of major note happened in this period until Selfridge transferred to Australia on May 21st. The destroyer would remain around Australia until July, on either training or coastal escort duty. This was pretty uneventful, although the training likely served her crew well. Because in July 1942, Selfridge sailed to Fiji to prepare for the invasion of Guadalcanal, Operation Watchtower, on August 7, 1942. For Selfridge, this didn't see much in the way of direct combat. The ship fired on a Japanese gasoline carrier around 6 a.m. on August 7, and then helped fend off an air attack a few hours later something that was repeated on August 8th, although this time, Selfridge would pick up two Japanese pilots after the attack ended. Selfridge would not, however, participate in the Battle of Savo Island later that night, at least not directly. Instead, the destroyer helped pick up survivors from the water, before assisting in the scuttling of HMAS Canberra, after which Selfridge helped escort the transports to safer waters. When that was done, Selfridge shifted to carrier escort. She would spend the next nine months on this duty, before the ship was reassigned to the Third Fleet in May of 1943. Initially, this didn't change much. Selfridge just shifted from escorting carriers to escorting cruisers. It was on this role that Selfridge would sail into her most notable event. In late September 1942, the destroyer escorted a convoy to Vela La Vela, before taking up patrols on the slot to try and interdict Japanese shipping. This would come to a head on the night of October 6, 1942. Selfridge, alongside USS O'Bannon and USS Chevalier, intercepted a Japanese formation. Six modern destroyers and three older destroyers 
acting as transports. The following action, the Battle of Vela La Vela, would be a chaotic mess. Chevalier was torpedoed and crippled, not helped by a collision with O'Bannon that locked the destroyers together. Ultimately, Chevalier would have to be scuttled later while O'Bannon was heavily damaged. With her partners out of the fight, Selfridge continued on alone, which resulted in taking a torpedo to the bow with devastating consequences. Nearly 100 feet of the bow was blown off all the way up to the super-firing turret. That turret, with its gun house blown away, shows the damage in stark detail. Yet, despite the damage, Selfridge remained afloat. The ship lost 13 sailors, with 11 more wounded and 36 missing. The remaining crew, however, managed to keep their ship afloat through heroic damage control efforts. Selfridge limped to safe harbor, where the damaged bow was cut off, and the stumpy destroyer, missing everything ahead of the bridge, was fitted with a temporary bow. With most of the hull gone, Selfridge sailed for the west coast and proper repair. She arrived at Mare Island by the end of 1943 for the fitting of a new bow. That process took from January 24th, 1944 to April 21st. The ship was not repaired to her original configuration. The Navy took the chance to remove the single-purpose gun mounts. Instead, Selfridge would come out with new dual-purpose mounts. A twin on the bow and another twin on the stern with a single 5-inch gun mounted above the stern twin. The old bow super-firing mount was replaced by a Bofors gun position. In this new configuration, Selfridge returned to Pearl Harbor on May 10, 1944, where she was assigned to support the Marianas campaign. For Selfridge, this wasn't particularly notable. She would escort the carriers during both the initial invasion on June 15th and the Marianas turkey shoot on June 19th. However, the Japanese aircraft never came close to the destroyer. Selfridge would also provide gunfire support for the invasion of Saipan. That would run through June 13th to June 26th, with the aforementioned break on the 19th for the Battle of the Philippine Sea. Otherwise, not much of note happened. The same would hold true in July of 1944. Selfridge shifted from Saipan to support the invasion of Guam on July 21st. The ship would remain in the general area after this for the next three weeks, mostly on the same escort and shore bombardment duty. Things did change, however, in August of 1944. Selfridge was reassigned to the Atlantic Fleet on August 21st. She would transit Panama on September 7th, before arriving in New York for a short overhaul. When that was finished, Selfridge began convoy escort duty in the Atlantic. However, considering this was late 1944, the U-boat menace was mostly a spent force. Not entirely, of course. While 1945 was even less of a concern, some U-boats remained a threat. On April 23, 1945, USS Eagle 56 was sunk. This old Great War patrol boat exploded violently. While the initial investigation decided on a boiler explosion, that wasn't the case. The submarine U-853 had torpedoed her. Selfridge, after picking up survivors, would depth charge that U-boat. The submarine escaped, but would be sunk soon after. After this, Selfridge continued on escort duty until the German surrender in May 1945. The destroyer would not be transferred back to the Pacific at this point. Instead, she was decommissioned on October 15, 1945, before ultimately being scrapped in October 1947. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.